Hey Gleeks, it is Winky Gleek and welcome to the third chapter of Until Today, my Lambs fan fiction. Um, while recording this earlier, I noticed that it was longer than 15 minutes and YouTube gives me a lot of crap about things being over 15 minutes, which is kind of weird. But uh, this will be in two parts. I will release this first part as you're seeing now this time and the second part will be later this afternoon at around two o'clock maybe uh just it's around that time frame please go check that out later and let's just get into the first part of the video so this is chapter three may you always be satisfied a day later we were in the city samuel seabury the street's news giver came around as he tried to give the news and thoughts on the proceedings of continental congress you interrupted him way too much I sometimes love that about you. My dog speaks more eloquently than thee, you speak. Lafayette makes some weird French dog noises in the background, and I come over and I come and walk over to you guys to have fun with you, Lafayette, and Mulligan, who's the one actually encouraging you. But I just keep smiling all throughout. We walked off Samuel's podium as Burr interferes and pushed you away, but I pulled you back in anyway. Eventually, we had finally had enough, and we broke away. Hamilton's perspective. I knew I was weak, but I wished for a war. It was the only way to rise up. The other way, I'm going to die on the battlefield in glory or rise up. We both joined Washington's staff. I got in, as was going to be Burr's place, as an aide-de-camp, a right-hand man to the general. I never got what I wanted, though, to lead a battalion. A fully armed squad to take in all the action, guts, and glory. Washington put you and I together on many missions. We were unstoppable stoppable together. Good job, guys. Uh, don't you mean guys? Uh, did I fucking stutter, gentlemen? He demanded. We blushed with our heads down in embarrassment. I enjoyed your company. We shared the same bunk most nights. Because Washington encouraged it, and I did like it. But I couldn't seem to get enough of you. Burr almost walked in on us together one morning, but you hid under the covers and tried not to make any noise. He suspected something was up, but I, but he eventually left. When we were separated for a mission in South Carolina, I wrote many affectionate letters towards you. You may have not responded to many letters, but one letter did send my true feelings. Nowadays, no one believes they were true, unless it was you, my dearest Lawrence. The letter... I sent, dated April 1779, wrote, Cold in my professions, warm in my friendships. I wish, my dear Lawrence, it were in my power, by actions rather than words, to tell you, <laughs> to convince you that I love you. I shall only tell you that till you bade us adieu, I hardly knew the value of you had taught my heart to set upon you. Indeed, my friend, it was not well done. You know the opinion I entertain of men kind and how much it is my desire to preserve myself free from particular attachments and to keep my happiness independent of the caprice of others. You should not have taken advantage of my sensibility to steal into my affections without my consent, but ha as you have done it and we are generally indulgent to those we love, I shall not scruple or pardon the fraud you have committed, on one condition, that for my sake, if not for your own, you always continue to, continue to merit the partiality in which you have so artfully instilled to me. As it said, I wish to show you that I love you, rather than just telling you. So cliche, I know. I wish to embrace you in other ways than just friends. You made me love you, but I had to keep myself from these feelings. For sodomy is a death threat to, to us, and it is a sin in God's eyes. But since you made me love you, and I love you so dearly, I wish for you to continue the letters. We always kept us secret through our writings, till it eventually caught up. I continued in the letter, put into my own words, but part of the letter, you continued, I can, I can't read, you wished for me to find a wife, ha, you thought just because I get married, my love for us was in doubt, for you'd be wrong, good sir, you married this Martha Manning three years ago, you, you even have children, yet you clearly love me, not her, for I do not want a wife, I missed my shots with them, women, Purposefully, for the only relationship I really wanted was with you.
more letters later. I was like a jealous love. I confessed to my sins and I claimed I was guilty. Your private affairs kept you from writing. You claimed as an inconstant and ungrateful. The lads sent their regards, but you pushed away until needed. Under Washington's lead, our next mission was important. I wasn't going to throw away this shot. I'm working with a third of what our Congress has promised. Washington claimed, I need someone like you to lighten the load. He needed men who were willing to help us fight for freedom. I mentioned you first, then our lads. I had some friends, Lawrence, Mulligan, Marquis de Lafayette. I need you men to help out. You arrived for the meeting and I, you congratulated me for making this far into the war. Months later, Mrs. Schuyler, the Schuyler sister's aunt, next door to where I currently lived held a winter's ball. There might be some ladies. Come join me. You wanted me to find a wife, so let's find me a wife. Lauren's perspective. I, I arrived there with you. Burr alongside us. He started to sing to get the party into a mood. We're reliable with the ladies. You and Burr sing. I sing along until the ladies bit. I'm not really in love with them. I've struggled with that my whole life, really. Especially when I met you, Alexander. When you came into my life. So I just looked at my hand and read the note. Let lettuce, lettuce, instead. No harm, no foul, right? There are so many true to flower ladies. We shout, looks proximity to power ladies. You became so distracted by all the young women in the room. The Skyler sisters made their way down the staircase. Lafayette tries to go for the oldest, but is ushered away by you. A winter's ball and the Skyla sisters are the envy of all. If you can marry a sister, you rich son, Burr said to us. Is it a question of if Burr or which one, you wondered? We joined it in a, we joined together in a mini dance line and went around eyeing the women with flirty looks. Hey, hey, hey. The dancing and the music start up, a beautiful sight to behold. The drinks are delicious and the food's great. Hercules introduces himself to Angelica and Margarita. Peggy. Very nice women they are, very well-mannered and soft-spoken. Washington dances a bit with Angelica after. Eliza's met by Burr and Lafayette is drinking, getting a drink in the back somewhere. I did hear there was amazing French wine. We walked back into the ballroom from the foyer. I tried not to stare, for I was a married man, but I was helpless. Your eyes dazzled with the lit lanterns lighting the ballroom, and your outfit was pristine. Not a single piece of dust or fuzz to behold. To be honest, my heart must have skipped a beat, and I almost spit out my drink because you looked so handsome. You and Washington chat, and Peggy is dancing with Hercules. A funny sight, to say the least, but who am I to judge? Angelica stopped dancing, stopped talking to Eliza and walked over to you and Washington standing on the staircase. I went up another staircase to get a good view of the ballroom. I definitely kept watching you two closely. She grabs your arm and Eliza gasps. But you look over to her and she turns around, blushes, and giggles to herself. The dresses of the women sway like lilies carried by the water streams, graceful as, as swans and elegant as the enchanted roses told in stories. The lights glisten more, but I still stayed in the dark. Angelica takes you by the arm. Both, You both walk over to Eliza. She fluffs her dress and combs her hair back a bit. Elizabeth Schuyler, pleasure to meet you, she curtsies. You pushed your hair back and took her to the dance floor. I figured I'm wasting my time doing nothing, so I just leave you guys alone. A week later, I hear you're sending Eliza the most poetic writings and the most charming letters. I never really got time to write letters back to you. Father came upon a letter I had left behind by accident. I was beaten by him and forced into church more by my wife and family to get rid of my sickness. They were almost burned, but I prayed to be different so I could keep them alive. I trust them very much. I'm sorry, my dearest Alexander. I couldn't write back due to my private affairs. For y I wish for you to marry Eliza Schuyler as soon as possible. Maybe that would make our affairs less slow or at least not as frequent. But you disagreed. You wrote, 
So, your impatience to have me married is misplaced. A strange cure, by the way, as if after matrimony I was to be less devoted than I am now. Two weeks later, you asked Mr. Philip Schuyler for his blessing to marry his daughter. You said, he came in the death, Claire, after I asked. And Eliza was behind a wall, tearing. He'd say no. But he didn't, and she raced into your arms. You said you had danced a little bit, and... Philip Schuyler handed you a drink. You invited me to your wedding through that very same letter before, not knowing if Eliza or her father would say yes. But I gladly agreed anyways. You personally had asked me to be best man. I couldn't say no. A thunder arose in me for some odd reason. A wave of sadness fell and I couldn't stop it, as if everything we had done meant nothing. And I was getting rejected for no reason at all. You continue to write, my mistress is a good fellow. <laughs> of course, I can't freaking read. My mistress is a good girl and already loves you because I have told her you are a clever fellow and my friend. But mind, she loves you a l'américaine, not a la François. Adieu, be happy, and let friendship between us be more than a name. A. Hamilton. At the wedding, I walked down the aisle with Angelica by my side. I could tell she had this same feeling. We, walk, we talked it over outside later. Lafayette walked down with Peggy, and you made Hercules a flower girl? That's just weird. Why? You walked over to the altar, and Eliza and her father came down the aisle. Her dress was beautiful. I could see you tearing up. Philip kissed Eliza's cheek. You said your vows, and you slipped on each other's rings. You kissed her. Thank you for coming to the third chapter, the first part of my fan fiction. I hope you can come back later for the second part. It will come out again around probably two, three o'clock around that time frame. Please go check and be sure to subscribe, comment, tag it somewhere. Just tag me in, obviously. And I will see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Do 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 do